We're here at the Clayton Center for our October Meet the Artist reception and this month Clayton Visual Arts is featuring artwork from Jill Hunt and Eric Schreffler and I'm here with Eric Schreffler right now and how are you doing great how are you good 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 to have you here so Eric is an airbrush artist um, now I know when I think of airbrush I think of really big lots of color um, I think about I think about the fair guys, like when you go to the fair and you see the guys doing the hats and the shirts, and um, I can't do what those guys do, but I'm trying to kind of change how airbrush is perceived, that you can really get some very detailed work out of an airbrush and a Zacto knife, and, um, but yeah, I mean that's, um, that's what I do as well as abstract, I'm, I'm music, music and enhanced type of stuff. I do everything that's kind of music related. And um, airbrush is one of the ones where I kind of step away from that a little bit and get real detailed, start get working on my detail work. Now, um, let's back up. Tell us a little bit more about how you started. You started more as a musician than a visual artist. I was. I was a musician and um, I've always um, been an artist since, since high school, but I just, you know, I never really pursued it at all until probably the last 10 years or so. And um, I, again, yeah, I'm a music enhanced uh, artist, which means when I, I do abstracts to music and um, you know, whatever kind of comes out, comes out. And I'll usually name it after one of the songs that I was painting to, you know. So I've got stuff with, you know, the names of Fleetwood Mac songs, you know, that are the name of the, name of the, uh, the paintings. But um, even further on from that, I started gravitating towards more musical instruments in that abstract work where I'll do an abstract and I'll paint musical instruments over top of it and really kill all the, the color. I want the color to just ooze out of it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really the main stuff that I'm working on now is that and the airbrush stuff. I can kind of go one way or the other. I so the abstracts, are they acrylic? They are. Okay. They are. Yep. I just got done down in Goldsboro. Um, I was selected to, to do 14 72 by 60 canvases that they were going to hang in the new um, Union Station down in Goldsboro. And they're, they're down there now. And I have, I have um, some of the prints available as well on my website. So um, it's fun. You know, it's a, it's a good way. You know, I can kind of let loose with those. And then if I want to get something a little detailed, I pull out a portrait and start, start doing that with a the airbrush if I want some a little bit more detailed. So I would love to see how you what you use for airbrush. It's not at all what I am familiar with, I'm sure, but um, tell us a little more about who you learned from and how how you learned to do this technique. Well I um, I learned from Drew Blair, which is uh, I I just I don't think there's anybody better than him in the world. He's photorealistic. Um, did a lot of aircraft type stuff where he would show aircraft going across ponds and stuff and blowing water up and it looked so it looks so realistic but it wasn't because he made them he made them up but um, yeah I mean he he was on a, uh, a Japanese show um, a couple years ago where he painted a portrait and they had the picture of the portrait and they had some other portraits as well and they were told, they, they told the Japanese guys to pick out the one that was painted and they could not pick the one that he did, wow. which is amazing. And you know, watching, watching kind of how he does it, um, very labor intensive, very labor intensive. How long does it take to do one of these portraits? It usually takes me about 24 hours. So yeah, and so if you break it up into six hour days, about four days. Of just um, and it starts out with just a pencil drawing, um, just a line drawing, um, and then the airbrush from then on. I don't yeah, use so, any. So it's a layering. Mm -hmm. I don't use any white at all. All my all my highlights are done by scraping the paint away to show the highlights. 
Um, anything that I have that's monochrome doesn't have any white or any color in it, and there's no additives to it. So it's one color, and that's all I use, and it's all transparent stuff. So yeah, you layer on top of it. And um, I mean, that's how I get my detail is, is through erasing and it's that negative scraping away the paint instead of adding it. Interesting. Are you still playing guitar? I am. I am. I'm in a band called Men With Faces, and uh, we'll be at the Big Easy um, a couple weeks from now, which is up on Fayetteville Street. So uh, it's a cover cover band. We do some. Uh, we have an album out as well, some originals. So um, I got a lot of hobbies. Got a lot of hobbies. And you have a website where we can see more of your work and your abstracts as well. I do. It's www.rockstarcanvas.com. And um, Men With Faces can be found on that as well. There's a link from there. Um, and everything on there is, um, it's a, you know, you can get, get a hold of me through email or phone. Um, and there is stuff on sale or, uh, on the site that can be purchased right off there, including prints of the train station um, install that we've mm -hmm. just had. So. And so how long is that going to be up there? It's going to be up there for at least three years, I believe. I believe it might be, you know, they might just say, yeah, just leave it, but, uh, which I'm hoping. Um, but, yeah, it's a, a minimum of three years. Wow, that's so, great. So uh, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of work, too. Well, thank you so much for being here at the Clayton Center. All right, really you're welcome. It. Thank you. This is our artist, Jill Hunt, um, who has her work on display. And Jill works in several different kinds of media. Um, Jill, I wanted to ask you, you started out um, majoring in illustration. I was did. that something you were hoping to pursue as a, as a career? Um, I, <clears throat> I really did hope to pursue that. Um, I, my hope was children's book illustration. Um, I feel like it comes through in a lot of my paintings still. Um, but um, I honestly, I got a little nervous about um, my future in that um, and wanted to pursue uh, something a little more stable. So I headed into art education and I taught art for many years um, before I became a full-time artist. Okay. And you taught all age levels, pretty much, in the uh, public schools? I did. For the most part, um, for the longest time, I taught uh, elementary age students, um, K through 12, well, K through 5, and um, then uh, most recently high school age students. Um, so, yeah, I have a little bit of everything under my belt, but um, about 12 years with uh, elementary age wow. students. Yeah. So Jill is more than qualified <laughs> to teach at her studio, which we'll be talking some more about. Um, Jill, I love your art because um, to me it's more than just pretty pictures. There's a lot of emotion in a lot of your pieces. This one behind us is one example. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this one? Oh gosh, um, this one turn this way, I guess. Um, this one's very symbolic to me. Um, it's one that I started years ago and um, didn't complete. And then I went back to it again and didn't complete it. <laughs> and I went back to it again and didn't complete it. And it became um, kind of a story um, of, of me. Um, I can notice it, the it's somewhat a, a self-portrait, and um, it it's, symbolizes um, the pathways in my life and influences in my life. Um, the little yellow bird that sits on my shoulder um, shows up in a number of my paintings, and that's um, a symbol for me of my dad. Um, so, um, there's, there's a lot to this one. It's very personal. <laughs> there's a lot of vulnerability showing through, even for someone that doesn't know the history of it, that, that, the, yeah. that shines through. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about your studio. Um, well, I, last year I left the classroom after nearly 18 years of teaching 
and um, I jumped into opening my own studio right here in downtown Clayton. Um, it's called Thistlebird Art Studio, and it's right across from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I use it in a number of ways. Um, it's a small space, but it serves as um, my working studio. Um, I'm there every day painting or um, making silk scarves or, or um, typically walking around barefoot and having paint all over me and looking a mess. Um, so you'll catch me working on things in progress, um, but it also serves as a gallery of my work um, for purchase and um, the venue where I do workshops and lessons. It's quite a wonderful thing. I was able to see your um, one of your newer pieces, that large piece oh, of your yeah. daughter in progress. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing to see something in progress. And then a few days later, um, the beautiful result. You use your daughter in a lot of your paintings. I do. I, I call her my muse. And um, my daughter, who's now 11, um, has been an inspiration to me in a number of ways. Um, She's opposite of me in a lot of ways that I admire. She's extremely confident and outgoing and, um, you know, just jumps into things with that young heart that, you know, anything can happen. Um, so it inspires me and, um, yeah, I, I feel like, to me, she's another symbol of something bigger that I put into a lot of my work. And I know she's very supportive of your work. I've been <laughs> <She> approached <laughs> by her to let me know that I could purchase one of your pieces. And she's so. my best marketing <laughs> expert. She is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And you have um, you have a website where we could learn more about the studio? Uh, and yes. Your work? Um, it is actually www.jillhunteclecticart.com. Um, and there you'll find information about my work and the studio and lots of other things. Okay, great. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Jill. Thanks, Amy. November will feature photography by Barbara Blaisdell and oils by Vicki Reese. We currently have a call to artists for artists um, who would like to exhibit at the Clayton Center. If you or anyone you know is interested, please go to our website, ClaytonVisualArtsNC.org, and select events. And that will tell you everything you need to, need to know to apply so you could have one of these exhibits at the Clayton Center. Also coming up December 6th is our Christmas in Clayton Art and Home Tour. And we're very excited because this is going to be downtown this year. I'm sure you're familiar with the Wagner House and Morning Glory Inn, those are two of the homes that are gonna be featured. We have a total of six homes featured. We're also gonna have a pop-up CVA gift gallery where you could do some Christmas shopping. It's gonna be a fantastic event. It's December 6th from three to seven. And tickets are on sale now. You can purchase from any of our CVA members um, at the Hocutt Ellington Library. We also have tickets on sale. And you could go to our website and pay through PayPal. So hope to see you next month.